What are the most common mistakes that a 3k carry player makes? Well, that is exactly what we're here today to discuss. I have a 3k, which is Archon 5, and a mage player here that we're going to be following. I have a lot of things that I want to point out that are mistakes within his gameplay. And trust me, guys, a lot of the mistakes you're going to see within him exist within you too. So take this as a way of improving yourself. And yeah, let's get into it. So recently I played a live Pugna game too that I actually recorded over and I talk a lot about how to dominate the support role, just in general, how to make plays alone. So this can apply to the carry role, the offlane role, mid lane, and it's a really cool match that I recorded and I'm posting very, very soon on the main Game League website. If you click the link down below, you're going to be able to view that entire video. It's super, super cool. On top of that, I also want to mention that I recently made a 33 Chen offlane replay. So I have a lot of great content coming out. There's even more, literally I've recorded even more stuff, maybe even some uh, secrets of top 50 players coming up in the Game Leap website as well. So a lot of great stuff. Everyone who I've been talking to about the website has been enjoying it. So yeah, click the link down below and hopefully I'll see you guys there. Right off the bat here, guys, what are these items? Where do you guys come up with these item builds? I, I actually have no clue. Like, Aladdin, where do you get this from? Where do you- I- I don't understand, but whatever, I'll move on. Alright, so moving ahead here, we're three minutes into the game, and this is where things really start to spice up, because Aladdin decides that he's not gonna buy any small items here. He's not gonna buy boots, he's not gonna buy wraith bands, he's not even gonna start buying perseverance or components to his battle fury. Now, I wanna ask you guys a question. Do you think because he's free farming, and he is free farming, this silencer is actually the mid silencer from the game, who made this really weird rotation away from his lane to gank the, the, the AM. I, I was confused myself when looking over this replay. But what should the Animage do when he's free farming? Should he rush a Battle Fury? Should he buy no other items? The answer is absolutely not. The reason for this is you want to get as far as head as possible, including levels. Rushing a Battle Fury actually does not really help your early game level. I mean, I want you guys to think about this logically. If you get free farm and then buy Treads and a Wraith Band, or you get free farm and then buy two components to a battle fury, such as a broadsword and then the ring of health. Which one do you think allows you to actually amplify your farm and pressure your opponents with? The answer is very clearly the treads, right? It's, it's not even close. Now there are lanes you can buy ring of health to sustain it if it's a very difficult lane, but when you're winning, you have to adapt to the situation. He is not adapting. His lane is free, so he's rushing a battle fury. So, Maybe I guess you could argue he's adapting, but this is literally the worst adaptation you could possibly go. And now skipping ahead here, it's six minutes in and he's yet to purchase a single item, not even the damage items for Battle Fury. And on top of that, he isn't even considering taking a single jungle camp. He has not had anyone in his lane. Why would he not kill the jungle camp multiple times? He could just shove the lane jungle, shove the lane jungle. He could be almost level eight right now, I would argue, if he was efficient enough. I'm serious, because you could just literally two minutes in, you could shove the lane ASAP, which might seem weird because you're giving the offlaner XP, but if you're super greedy and you're playing any mage, which I think it's fine to do, you shove the lane, side pull, and then you can farm both camps at the same time. It's super convenient, but he doesn't do any of these things, so he's not really building the net worth lead he could be, and that's just how you get better at Dota. You have to take advantage of good scenarios, and you have to deal with bad scenarios. And really guys, please put more of a priority on neutral items. I, I don't care if you're a support player, an offlane player, uh, a mid player, it doesn't matter! Just get some neutral items. Like, sure he ships out a royal jelly, so somehow he's paying enough attention to get a royal jelly, but he can't jungle, so he gets an ocean heart or an ironwood tree. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense these stat items will allow you to farm even faster and not die to ganks, because theoretically he could get ganked this game. This is a mid silencer, he could get globaled into a doom, globaled into an ursa gank or a pa gank and die, but he's of course not worried about this. Now, nine minutes in, he kills his first jungle camp and doesn't even stack it. He doesn't even stack it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so moving on here, we're 11 minutes in now, he gets a very good battle for your timing. I mean, after all, he's had complete free farm and rush the item. So realistically, he could get a 13 minute battle fury or a 12 minute battle fury with treads and two wraith bands because he can have 100 CS and not 80 right now. But I'll, I'll let that go and move on. The next thing I want to mention is why this build is so bad and why you guys need to stop greeting out with your items. He legitimately starts jungling and tries to take this ancient camp and dies to it. He dies to a stacked ancient camp. Do you think if he has treads and two wraith bands that happens? Hmm, I'm going to say the answer is no. So I want to look at some major decision making next here. Number one, he's in the jungle, he's invading, he has a DD. I actually kind of do like the fact that he's looking to play aggressive here. He's very farmed, and I, as I said, he has a DD as well as an Imclaw, so I don't mind it. 
However, he could make the play right now where instead of just killing this tri cam here, he could actually cut across the jungle, kill all the camps, and then even throw in the PA with the help of his Shadow Demon. He ends up making a good decision here. I, I will, I'll, I'll give him credit. Hey, he's 3k for a reason, right? Uh, you know, like if, if you're 1k or 2k and you're looking at these, this is a great play. Synergizing with this Legion Commander to pick up a Doom Kill. That's awesome. That's awesome. But what should he do next, guys? And this is important because a lot of people would disregard this. They'd be like, oh, great play, Animage. But then they wouldn't look at what happens five seconds afterwards. What is he doing? What is he doing? Not only can he maybe at least just kill the silencer on the left here, he's just hitting some glyph tower and walking in circles. He could have killed an extra two camps and been all the way to mid wave here, shoving this in. Then he could kill the next mid wave. Then he could kill this camp and then this camp. But instead, he sort of just wastes like 10 seconds there. And I hate when people do that. Now, the reason why I'm making this a clear point is because the major time when carry players waste time, especially 3K carry players, is after a fight. They'll get a pick off, they'll get an engagement, but then they feel like they have to keep going. You don't have to keep going. Nine times out of 10, you can't even kill the tower. They just glyph it in multi shots and it's GG. You can't push, just farm an extra 300, 400 gold in that duration, which will get you to your next item timing 30 seconds faster, which in Dota matters a lot. On top of that here, he's just going backwards all the time. Guys, you have to stop being so afraid of playing on the opposite side of the map. And this is my next point, you stop going all the way back into your jungle every single time. I want to ask you a question. Where should he go right now? After pushing in this midway, where should he go? Not on the Ursa, that's a really bad matchup. Ursa's also level 13. However, he could go up to this camp, right? Then to this camp, then to this one, and then be at the top wave. Because any mage likes to farm lanes if possible, right? Lanes and Ancients, those are really good things once you have a couple of items. He's not doing either here. He goes back to this really awkward farming pattern where now he can't show up to any fights, He's not by any lanes, it's just inefficient. Now here, I wanna talk about a small idea that plagues the Dota community. And it's really one of the hardest things to learn in Dota. And that's looking at your minimap when you're going on someone. Guys, when you're going on someone and you've casted all your spells or you're a right-clicking hero that can't do anything, you have to look at the minimap. Like, I, I can't stress this enough. Look at where the enemy team is right now. They're in position to potentially fight this. Do you think, I, I want you to tell me in the comments, as well as like the video. I, I know this is really random, but like the video. In the comments right now, please tell me, is he looking at the minimap based on this play? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because if this Rubik doesn't insta lift here, because this is just a really bad lift, the Animage was threatening nobody, you don't need to lift like that, it's just a terrible lift. But if he's not paying attention and gets lifted right now, right? If he gets lifted right now, dead. He's dead. He is, because he's not looking at the map. Instead, he could once again be top or bottom here. He's just never, ever, ever looking at the map. And once again, instead of going to the next camp, he walks in circles because of the engagement. Why not just kill this camp? Like, where are you going? And you have to ask yourself that question. Where are you going? Where are you going? Because it's not to the next camp. You're just walking in circles. What is he doing right now? He's just walking around. He goes on this Rubik here, doesn't get the kill, wastes more time, and is getting now pressured by a PA. Frankly, that was a really good reflection of the dagger, but overall, it's just such a lack of efficiency, and he's ne he hasn't been in the top lane once. If you guys watch any sort of pro carries, you're going to see that they're in the enemy offlane all the time, and for good reason. It's often safe. Your team can ward it for you. The, the enemy team is going to go on the other side of the map as well. It just blows my mind. Finally, he makes a good rotation up to the top side, but holy, it took him a while. Following that, once again, he somehow ends up back in his triangle, which in this case wasn't terrible as he ends up making his way back up top, but then he makes the worst decision of the entire game. And just to be clear, guys, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, he wins this game. So he doesn't play that bad. He's 10k ahead, he got free farm, but his team is doing well. I can respect that, he farmed enough. But what is this next TP? Look at the map right now. Can he die? No! Why would he leave this area unless he's TPing directly to an engagement? Or at least to get like some giga creep wave. He could just farm, like, why did he go back to here and kill this camp instead of pushing the next wave, going to here, maybe taking the outpost as well to get map control so that this area is basically 100% safe. Instead, he just TP's bottom. Like, what is this TP? It doesn't do anything. He's not drawing any attention to top, meaning the enemy team is now going to be able to group because he leaves top, right? He's putting no pressure on the tower, which is such an advantage in Dota. He doesn't have to take the top tower, but he can just pressure it so that they have to force rotations. Instead, he goes on this Doom who he shouldn't have killed, but Doom just kills himself. So, like, I, I guess it worked out. The Stampede also gave him the slow to, to get it, but, like, you don't want to TP bottom for a wave there and then hopefully get a kill. Like, the Doom shouldn't have died, so that's just an uncalculated play that 
quote unquote worked out, but even then, look at the top side of the map right now. He could easily have taken the tier two, put a ton of pressure, and then TP mid now. And then, let's say the PA goes top to deal with him. Then you TP mid, or you blink to mid, because they don't have as mobile, of course, any mage's biggest advantage is his mobility. Then you blink to mid, or you TP mid, and you take a good fight. But he doesn't really do that. Oh my god. Guys, I didn't even see this when I was originally making the script for this video. But what is this? So there's an Invis Silencer here that's low, like right here. So instead of just pushing in some waves, he no joke stands still right here to camp the Invis Silencer. He's camping an Invis Silencer. Does this kill matter? The guy has no resources. Just push in two creep waves. Like, what is this? And then he's going on some Doom instead. And then, I mean, he finds the Silencer eventually, which is comical, but... It's just so goofy. I just hate when play looks goofy. Just push in two waves. Like, don't sit on some silencer when you have no detection. It just... And then, like, what? How does he get doomed like this? Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. The next thing I have to mention is Roshan. For a lot of carry players, you are the person who dictates Roshan. You are the player who allows your team to kill it. So you have to think about it. You have to be the person who calls it. Don't rely on your supports to do that or your mid laner. He gets a DD here and he's very farmed. His team is in the general area. And he doesn't even Roche. He just doesn't Roche. Like, and it's just one of those plays where a top tier carry is never going to make this mistake. It's going to allow them to get Aegis and end the game right now. Instead, he has to take some bizarre fight later on and it draws out the match. So, guys, take Roshan to draw the enemy team towards you instead of just running around in circles, especially if you get a DD. And now here is a very important fight where I want to talk about tunnel visioning. Uh, this is, target priority and tunnel visioning is the bane of most carry players' existence. It's the reason why they struggle with the team fight even when they have a lot of farm. So in this case, he goes on the Ursa, which I think is okay. The Shadow even puts the Ursa under, right? Probably didn't assume that the AM wanted to jump him. No big deal, right? Really no big deal. Uh, here, he should be auto-attacking the PA, bit of a mistake. Still okay. All I want to say, though, is what is he looking at, right? Right here, what is he looking at? Is he looking at the minimap? No, right? Because if he is, well, he could just go kill the Rubik. Now, going on the Ursa here is actually okay, all I'm trying to say, even though this fight was not played bad by him, I will give him credit, it was fine. I think his original jump of the Ursa allowed his team to come in and take a good fight. I think he protected his supports, I think he went on the PA in the back line. I think he did a lot right. But still, is he looking at the minimap? No, because now, here, he would have instantly blinked forward if he was. He would know the Rubik's there, right? Did I saw the Rubik. Did he see the Rubik? No! And this really uh, comes into play in a lot of ways, because you're going to die if you don't pay attention to the minimap because you're not going to know the backups that coming. You're not going to be able to pursue extra kills and fights. You're not going to know if you should back off. There's really just so many reasons why you need to pay attention more to what's going on around you and try not to focus too much on exactly what's happening on your screen. Because more often than not, if you've casted all your spells already, what you need to pay attention to, or if you're auto-attacking, is what's actually going on around you. This next one really saddens me because I know I've been pushing this for a long time and... I just wish carry players would understand the impact of pushing lanes. Guys, you have to, if you're trying to gain MMR and you're trying to become a better player, you need to focus more on lanes. Look at the lanes right now. So a really bad mid fight just took place. His Legion and his SF died. Okay, it's not a fight, right? I'm glad that he's not jumping in. But what should you do then? Find the open lane, put on pressure so the enemy team can't push, they can't look for an objective, and you get more farm that way. He also could theoretically threaten the bottom racks. Why wouldn't he go push in the bottom lane? They don't have a Storm who's going to catch him. They don't have a Clockwork. They don't have any hero that's going to gun on top of him. Instead, he does this really weird mid maneuver where he puts himself in slight danger. And look, the enemy team is chasing mid right now. Imagine if he's bottom. He no joke could potentially take the ranged racks. Instead, he's just walking in circles. What is the purpose of this? Guys, stop walking in circles. He legitimately could have pushed in the bottom wave, taken a ranged racks, or at least forced the TP from a support, kill the support, you know, then take the racks, or you have to back off, then you can go top. Like right here, he could have gone top. It's just a disaster. Get to a wave, man. Get to a wave. What is this jungling? It's so useless. And then he runs into some Ursa. Finally, he gets to the creep wave, but it was basically by accident. And then for some reason, he TPs the base. Like he could have TP top, right? Why would he TP base? Don't TP base, guys. He's 900 HP. He has a Royal Jelly and Greater Fairy Fire. You'll, you'll heal up eventually. Go top. He could kill eight camps and like three waves and have a full 1500 gold or something like that. And now I don't want to, I don't want, and now I don't want to drag the video on forever. It's been long as is, but hopefully you guys have learned a ton. If you have, as I said, like the video to help me in, in my process of continuing to 
try to better the Dota community as players as a whole, because, I mean, that is obviously my goal. But really, getting into this, what is this heart? So he buys up Asher, fine, I'm cool with that. But why not just finish the Abyssal? If you finish the Abyssal, you can insta-kill Rubik. You could actually insta-kill Doom, probably, because the Doom is very under farm. Right, so he could kill Doom, he could kill Rubik, he could kill Silencer. I would argue he could burn all of the mana of the PA with no BKB and ruin her fight, because a PA with no mana is pretty useless. Same thing with Ursa. He could jump them, burn their mana, even if he doesn't kill them with the Abyssal, he could ruin their fight. But instead he goes a heart, and he ends up dying actually trying to mana up some PA, and I'm not gonna say the heart's the exact reason for that, I just think that it doesn't make any sense to do these weird item builds that no pros are going right now. I can't stress this enough guys, look at the pro scene and copy their builds. They go good builds for a reason, and try to understand why they go builds in the specific games, because I know it can be difficult, it, ch it changes from game to game, but I can guarantee you, no one in a million years has gone basher into heart. Actually, maybe that's not true. Someone's gonna find like one match ID and post in the comment and be like, Speed, you're such a shit creator. <laughs> this is the game where they bought heart. <laughs> All right, uh, I mean, just, I'm gonna move on. All right, and last but not least, I wanna talk about tunnel visioning one more time, only because it's really a main thesis of my gameplay. Whenever you're playing a carry hero, it's very important to understand what your job of the fight is. His job, in my opinion, is to kill the supports and then slowly move in on the cores, or if a core heavily overextends, heavily overextends, that's the keyword, not slightly, heavily, he can jump and help. But in this case, he's supposed to jump the silencer. It took him literally a good three seconds before jumping, which is valuable time wasted. You can't just, like, look how long it took him to jump the silencer. Now, why is this? Because he's not thinking about where silencer's going to be. Where are Rubik and silencer going to be if the fight's taking place here? Two options. They're either going to be here, or they're going to be here. I guess in this case, the Rubik also ended up on the high ground, but just look behind the cores. The supports are there. So right off the bat here, jump. Where are you going? He's running to Narnia. Just jump. Like finally, uh, took him forever though. And then once again here, I, I understand why he helps out. Uh, that, that was a pretty bad mana void, but I'm not going to flame him too much for that. What I will say though, is that both of these cores BKB, it's Ursa PA, terrible, terrible AM matchups. Terrible AM matchups. So instead, if he's looking at the minimap, what is his option? He could actually blink up to the Rubik. It's a free kill. They have a ward there. They see the Rubik. He can blink up, but instead he tries to man up on a PA and an Ursa, and you guys can probably guess how that one works out. Pretty pretty bad, he lives on 50 HP, uh, gets out, pretty fortunate. Greater Fairy Fire, great usage by the way, I, I always forget to use that, but I can applaud him for that. That's pretty good. But that's where we're gonna end the video, I hope you guys enjoyed this take of what 3k MMR players are doing wrong. I really do believe if you take what I'm saying seriously and not as a joke, you're gonna get better. I really mean that. I've been coaching a lot of safe limb players as of late, and I really do believe that all of them are getting much better, much quicker, even if it's not directly your MMR, right? Sometimes your MMR won't directly follow your improvement. It can take a little bit of time. However, for the most part, if you guys continue to apply what I'm saying, actually apply what I'm saying and learn and learn and learn, you will get better. You will gain MMR, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. And hey guys, remember, before you end this video, in the link down below, I've been playing a lot of live games where I talk about my thoughts in real time in the middle of a Dota match. So if you want to get in the head of a pro player, click the link down below to the Game Leap website. Super cheap right now, right? Like, and I'm doing this a ton. We all have time on our hands. I have time to make content. You guys probably have time to enjoy and learn Dota, get better at the game. So yeah, if, if that combo works for you, click the link down below and I'll see you there.